What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and in this video I wanted to show you my favorite power play setup um, which is actually a hybrid between the overload and the umbrella. It starts off as an overload and then shifts into an umbrella as the plate develops. And this is this one, the reason why I like it so much is because um, it's really hard to set up against. You know, there are generally certain setups that people use for, uh, you know, defending against an umbrella, certain setups that work for defending against a, an overload. And um, since we're kind of combining the two, it really becomes difficult for the other team. And it becomes easier for you to isolate corners of, you know, if the other team's using a box, it becomes easier to isolate corners of the box, um, to suck players in, make sure that they, you know, get, pull them out of position, and then exploit that. So let's go ahead. We'll, uh, I'll show you how this kind of works out. Um, again, on the, uh, on the power play setups, I usually just designate either right-handed player or left-handed player. Um, and each specific position has a specific skill set. And what I usually like to do is have, um, you know, I usually like to designate which side of the ice that we're going to set this up on. And there, you'll see as we diagram this out that there are enough options within um, these setups that uh, you can read and react off just about anything that the other team does. And even though you're only ever setting up on one side of the ice, it's very difficult if you execute properly, uh, very difficult for the other team to stop you. So uh, let's go ahead and start drawing this up. So we've got our puck handling. This, the, this guy acts as uh, a little bit more of the quarterback to start this play um, on this particular setup. So it's, it works the best if he's a right-handed. Um, he needs to be a good passer. Uh, needs to be able to read the play really well. This is this is a more advanced setup, so he he need his skill set is a lot a lot bigger. He also needs to have a good one time shot. Okay, so those are kind of the three uh, three main things for him: good passer, good play reader, and a good one time shot. Um, this guy is also a righty. He needs to be um, he needs to have a good one timer. Um, he also needs to be fast and to be able to read the play well, and he also needs to be a digger. Okay, so that's where uh, you know he's got a, a larger skill set as well, um, especially compared to you know the, the more basic setups. Um, this guy needs to be a right-hander, needs to be a good puck controller, needs to be a very good passer. Uh, also needs to be able to have the ability to get a shot on net. Doesn't have to be a hard shot, but it has to be on net. Um, we, we we hate to see these guys blasting shots off the uh, opponent's shin pads. Um, that just really puts a damper on the whole power play. You know, then you got to back check, and then you got to you know try to get the puck back, and it wastes wastes precious time. So he needs to be able to uh, to really control the puck there, and uh, be deceiving in the way that he uh, presents himself. So he needs to make make it look like he's shooting, and then then he'll pass, or or the opposite, make it look like he's passing and shoot. So bigger skill set there. Um, this guy just needs to be a digger. Um, his skill set isn't quite as big. But he's got to be tough. He's got to be a digger. He's got to be able to, to knock in rebounds and uh, make stuff happen um, in front of the net. This guy also needs to have a, a really good slap shot or a really good one-timer. So uh, he's another passing option as this rotates into an umbrella, and you'll see how this works. So here's how this play is going to work. Um, this is, this is I really like it, so I get excited when I talk about this. But um, these two players are going to pass back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? Then the play is going to be, um, the trigger is going to happen based off this player right here, okay? So when he reads that he is pulled in, and I'm going to put in some defenders here. I'll make them blue just so that we're not too confused here. So let's just say the other team is using some sort of basic uh, box type setup. We won't get too elaborate with different uh, options here, but it's safe to say that at some point in the season you'll see a box, uh, which is pretty pretty standard. What you're looking to do is you're looking to suck this man out, make him come out and uh, lose patience and um, basically make himself isolatable. So when this guy reads that this has happened, okay, so this guy has sucked himself out of position a little bit too far, now our board side winger is going to drive through full speed, okay? Um, and you can see where there's a possible passing option here. So there is a possible passing option here for a one-time shot. That is an option. Um, but what I'm going to have happen here is, uh, you know, just to illustrate how the whole play works, um, so we'll show you little options along the way, but how the whole play works is like this. As soon as this guy drives, that's the trigger. That's what's going to key off everything else to happen. So that's going to trick or trigger this guy into his next play, which is he's going to do a little bank pass back to this right-handed defenseman here. Okay. When the right defenseman gets it, he's going to start walking across. 
Okay, and you can see how this is going to start isolating players, and this is where it gets really fun. Um, after this guy has made the pass, he's going to follow his pass, okay? And he's going to end up somewhere around the top of the circle on the side here, okay? I'm going to get rid of some of these other arrows because I don't want to make this too mucky here, okay? And this guy has walked across, so we'll, uh, oops, we'll say that he's like right here, okay? And as this guy sees that his, uh, his key guy is walking across, then he slides down. Okay, so now you can see what we're doing is we're opening up into an umbrella. Now, this is basically isolating this player now. He has to make a decision. Do I come out and play this guy? Do I try to uh, hang out in the middle and defend against the pass? Um, or what, right? So depending on what he does, if he comes and tries to defend against the pass, that's, that's fine. We actually don't mind that option at all. This guy just takes a couple explosive steps to the middle and fires a shot through. You can see that that opens up a lane for the shot. We've already got our right-handed our right -handed guy here who is blown through, and uh, he's now at the net. We've also got our left-handed guy at the net. We've kind of hung this guy out to dry, so if all this happens properly and is timed correctly, we've hung this guy out to dry. We've now got an odd man situation in front here. Um, this player is out of position, and we've got a shot coming through. Okay, So that's where that will work. Um, if this player comes out and takes more of an angle of trying to block the shot, which um, this player, it's, it's really, it's not that hard to suck a man out there. It's really not that hard. Um, you just hold on to it, make it look like you're going to shoot, and then as soon as that guy comes out, then you've got your passing lane right back to this guy. Okay, so now you've sucked this player out of position, this player is already slightly out of position, and you've got a good one-time shot angle with two men at the front of the net um, to take that shot there. So that's the next option. Then there are also a few other options. Uh, once you've done this a few times um, and the other team starts realizing that you're just uh, really isolating those guys, they may try something new. They may try to bring this guy out and let this guy play the pass. And if they do that, that's fine too because that leaves your left-handed guy open. And uh, he's got a good hard one-time shot with two guys at the net. So you can really cause a lot of trouble for the other team um, by using this overload that shifts into an umbrella. Uh, it is a much more difficult power play to set up. Each player has certain very specific responsibilities and needs to have certain skill sets. So I would say that this is a, a very effective one for some of your older age groups, you know, maybe Bantam, Midget, Junior. Um, probably you wanna stick with something a little bit more basic for your younger age groups, uh, you know, Pee Wee and Younger. But, um, you know, def definitely this is, uh, this is definitely my favorite version of it. Um, and if you've got the personnel to make it work, it can be extremely effective. So those are just a few of the options that you can use. But basically this ends up being um, a full-blown umbrella. Um, and then, you know, then if the, puck, if the puck happens to bounce off or doesn't score and, and it goes back into the corner, say it goes into this corner, we'll have this guy go get it and then work it back to the original corner so that the original setup can take place again. So then we'll bring this guy back down, right? And slide these guys back over. And we just regroup, set up right back in the exact same formation. Um, depending on how the play ends up, sometimes these guys may get switched. Um, if both of these have uh, compatible skill sets, then it, that doesn't make a huge difference. But if uh, one guy is much better at doing it than the other, you may work these guys back into a switch as well. Um, but there's so, so many different possibilities, different options. But uh, the way that I would practice this is get the patterns established and uh, working without any pressure against, then make it a five on three uh, with light pressure, maybe have the defenders turn their sticks over um, so that the body positioning becomes more important than the stick positioning and they're not going to intercept a whole lot of passes. Just gives the uh, power play guys a little bit more room to work with. Uh, then put a four, you know, a five on four with sticks turned upside down again and then eventually work it into a full-blown um, five on four with sticks turned the correct way and uh, work on the options. So that's your uh, hybrid overload and uh, umbrella power play setup.